Russ, those researchers who would like to believe that consciousness is something special would tend to believe that there's a unity, there's a core element of consciousness that may be irreducible. Those who would believe it's purely a neurobiological uh, system would tend to believe that there are different systems that the neurology of our brains have evolved to produce, uh, sight, sound, smells, uh, feelings, uh, which are in fact all independent, but somehow we have the illusion the brain tricks us into thinking that there's a unity of consciousness. Many of those are theoretical kinds of, uh, of discussions. Uh, through your work and inner experience, where you're literally sampling what people think at very specific moments, uh, can you bring um, empirical data to the question of the unity of consciousness? I can say with pretty great confidence that inner experience is not unified. I don't consider myself an expert on consciousness, but if consciousness and inner experience, to the extent that those are related to each other, <laughs> then I would say that consciousness is, is not unified. So for example, I, would, I, I can have a sample of a, of a person who's sitting on the couch. Uh, so the beeper, I, I give people a beeper, and I ask them to report what's going on at the moment of the beep, and, and we work together to get some kind of a understanding of how we do that in, in a, what I call a high fidelity way. And so the beep that I have in mind, the guy's on, a, on the couch talking to his girlfriend, and he is in the, in the process of speaking, and he's paying attention to what it is that he's saying. And at the same time, he feels like he's up in the corner of the room looking down on the scene. And so he feels like there's two separate Johns going on at the same time, one that's talking and one that's watching. And there's no. And he reports this at a given moment. It's that's not right. two separate moments. That's correct. He reports these as being ongoing at the same time, in the same moment. And we've worked together enough so that I think I'm, I, I credit that that report as being uh, high fidelity. And you can you can differentiate that from the two being uh, sequential, very close, in which the person thinks that they're they're at the same time, but really it's 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 one very quickly following the other. I don't know about that. So it could be that it's one and very following the other, and that's what actually happens in the neurology or the mind yeah, but, or the, but, whatever. At least the thought of the person. But as far as the experience is concerned, it's, okay. it's one thing. Okay. And yes, okay. I think okay. I, can, I can be confident about okay. that. And, and, it, and it's not that there's one that's primary and the other is secondary. It's mm -hmm. that I, there's the John that's talking here, and there's the John that's looking, looking down that way. Now, that, that, the having of the different perspective, that's fairly unusual. That's fairly unusual. But for, the, for different aspects of experience going on at the same time, that's quite frequent, actually. Uh, well, I shouldn't say quite frequent. Maybe a couple of percent of the samples that I have, have would be really, truly multiple experiences of one and, kind of and if that could occur at all, I mean, that, that's a, a fundamental uh, 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 way of probing how those things can happen. Now, when you find those uh, multiple things going on at the same time, are they ever multimodal in terms of the sensory or the different carry, or, or are they, you know, two different kinds of images or five images that are all visual images the same? It can be all of the above. So, so, so just to be clear, if the, if if I'm thinking about my girlfriend and I see her and I and I remember this and all those things are together. That's, that's a kind of a, I, I deal with a university population frequently, and that's the kind of a, that's the kind of a experience you get. That is not what I would call a multiple experience. Okay, right. a mul just because it has multiple aspects, right, I would right, not call that a multiple right, experience. Right. A multiple experience is when I'm thinking about my girlfriend, and at the same time, I'm thinking that I need to put air in the front left tire of my car because <laughs> I was noticed that it was a little flat. Right. And so those are, those are really quite orthogonal kinds yeah, of, right. Of, of experiences, and those occur a couple of percent of the time. Uh, and in those cases, do you have them uh, uh, with different uh, categories, or are they the same kind of categories? Like the, it's the image of putting the air in my front tire, and the image of my girlfriend, or is it the it could, one could be a sound and one could be a sound? It could be it could be just about any combination. I could have an image of my girlfriend and at the same time an image of the the tire that I need to fix. And those seem to be quite simultaneous and they could and they could one of them be over there and one of them be over there. I could they could be right on top of each other. Yeah. Or I could be have two simultaneous inner speakings. I 
I, I, I'm saying to my girlfriend, I'll take you to the movies tonight, unquote, and at the same time saying to myself, I need to put air in the front tires of my car. And or can you mix any it modal? So, 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 so one can be a vision and one can be an yep. in, inner speaking? Absolutely. And people can report this? Yes. So, so what, what, what I said was the uh, alternatives are some people feel that consciousness is, is absolutely unified, and those are the people who generally believe there's something special about consciousness. And those people who believe that consciousness is purely the, the, um, the illusion that the brain creates from different neurological strands that all sort of work together that we, in an illusory way, put together we think is consciousness. So without meaning to enter into the argument about consciousness, what I would say is that you can have multiple, con multiple inner experiences going on at the same time, and those can be just as special as one inner experience. There's nothing that diminishes the, uh, uh -huh. the, the uniqueness or the specialness. I forget what right, your word right. was about that, but just by, by the fact of having two or maybe even five, five yeah, of them. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that it's distributed <laughs> entirely throughout the brain architecture. Yeah. And so, uh, how significant is this in in terms of uh, understanding the inner life of uh, of people? To when when you do this type of of um, inner experience sampling, I mean, how is it reliable? Is it a, is it a good test of really what's happening? I think so. As long as as long as we keep to the topic of pristine inner experience, which is what I've tried tried to study. I think those reports can be very reliable. And the reason that they're interesting, and the reason that I think they should be considered scientifically valuable, is that first, people don't know their own inner experience. And that includes, and well, so let's start with that. People don't know their own inner experience. Many people, probably most people, don't know their own the characteristics of their own inner experience, and the reason for that is they're looking away from it most of the time. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about what you're going to say to me, but you're not thinking about how you're thinking about what you're, <laughs> what you're saying to me. The second, and and so people are incapable of, I think, giving high fidelity answers to questionnaires, and they're not capable, I think, of giving high fidelity uh, uh, armchair introspections because that's a not a pristine situation. That's just saying, well, I think right now I'm going to take a look at what, see what's in my, in my inner experience. If you do that, destroy. Yeah. you've destroyed what you're natural at, and you're likely to find a lot of words there because yeah. you've probably posed that yeah. question yeah. in words and you're ready to go in words. Yeah. So as far as the scientific enterprise is concerned, I think you have to start with a high fidelity view of, uh, of inner experience. And what do you do with it, of course? The, well, that's, that's the theorist's job, which is not me.